Okay, so next up is physical security. And, and basically, when it comes to security, all the emphasis can't be placed on just the technical controls. All right, so it's important to understand that it doesn't matter if you have a $5,000 lock in the front door with all the bells and whistles, retina, fingerprint scanner, what have you. If the side window is left wide open, <laughs> right, it doesn't do you much good. So physical se uh, security is important for a number of reasons, both to protect the company's computers and the systems and data, obviously, but also to ensure that employees have a safe environment to work in as well. So there are a number of controls that we can put in place to ensure unauthorized personnel can't enter the building and in some cases can't even enter the property. So let's take a look at the physical controls that we can use to limit access to our systems and to our data. Let's start off with hardware locks. Now, as we know, hardware locks come in a variety of shapes and sizes and features. Some use uh, the old-fashioned key, some are combination. Some of the newer systems are biometric devices, and that contains, like I said, a fingerprint scanner or an iris or a retina scan, you know, something that you have or something that you are. Now, those types of are obviously you know, relatively, I wouldn't say rare, but they're, they're certainly not as common as the older key and combination types of locks. Um, but no matter which type you have, locks should be placed on fencing, on doors, cabinets, cages, you know, within your data center or within uh, supply closets and so forth, anywhere where access is restricted. And in some cases, we should even put uh, locks on our trash cans and so forth. If we have a shredding area or something that needs to be secure, always make sure that those things are maintained because it's very easy for someone to go in and dumpster dive and pull out some sensitive information if it's not maintained properly. Okay, the next one is something referred to as a man trap. And a man trap is an access control, and it's basically two sets of doors. So a person will enter the first set of doors, which then closes behind them, right? And then the guard or some automated control will allow access through a second door once authentication is verified. All right, so as you see from the graphic here, we have one set of doors, or one door that will open. A person would walk into that enclosed area. The door would shut behind them. Now, they either have to badge in or they have an, you know, a card reader, whether it's an RFID or NFC chip, or there may be a guard actually sitting behind a, a, a glass area, or perhaps maybe on a video camera. Okay, there's going to be some verification system that once that person is then verified, the second door will open and they can pass through. Next, we have a video surveillance. And with video surveillance, uh, it can be used, obviously, to monitor access and to guard the perimeter. But it can also be used to detect motion and as well as to document activity. So video surveillance is, is, has a wide variety of use cases. Uh, it can work in tandem with man traps or remote authentication. So in other words, a guard could be sitting maybe in the same room in the same building or across town or in some other state and still verify someone to come in. Okay, It doesn't necessarily have to be on site. Uh, video surveillance can also issue alarms or alerts if unauthorized activity is detected, whether it be through motion or someone physically manning uh, you know, a, a TV watching for motion 24-7 or whatever period of time that might be. If they see something that, that shouldn't be there, they can issue an alarm, or it can be an automated system that would detect motion and, of course, issue that alarm. And it can also create a record of activity uh, for later analysis and investigation. So these types of systems can be a, a deterrent. It just depends on what it is. It's obviously also a detective type of control type. We'll talk about the control types a little more later. But it, it can fall into multiple categories. All right, now it wouldn't necessarily prevent like a physical control as far as like a, a giant fence or something that cannot be passed through, but it may be enough of a deterrent to prevent somebody from doing something. And of course, that is also in tandem or works kind of in concert with signage. So it's important to have uh, signs all around as well that will alert and let someone know that, hey, this area is being under, is a, falls under video surveillance or, you know, don't go here because of danger this or danger that. So we want to make sure that the signs are properly uh, placed around our workplace so that we, of course, make a safe environment for our employees, but also that we warn uh, potential attackers and so forth that, hey, you, you might not want to do that. 